This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Right, so let's go through and have a look at these first financial statements. You should be familiar with them from financial accounting. There will be bits and pieces that you see that have been added in that you're not familiar with from financial accounting. But it's important that we have them in the notes here so that you can then come back and refer to it as we go through that relevant chapter uh, later in the course. OK, so what have we got uh, here? We're looking at the balance sheet or statement of financial position, hotel, motel. They're the same thing, aren't they? But with a different name. Uh, so remember what you're looking at there. The statement of financial position is that it is as at a point in time, isn't it? It's a snapshot in time of all the assets that the entity controls and all the liabilities that the entity has an obligation to pay. So effectively what we own and what we owe. Okay. Uh, so as you can see there, you've got the, the standard IS1 presentation, uh, the assets at the top and the equities and liabilities at the bottom showing the accounting equation from way back in those first lectures in financial accounting. Uh, and if we're going through there and looking at the assets, remember, uh, we split out the assets into non-current and is it current, isn't it? OK, uh, what we go through and see there within non-current uh, is property, plant and equipment, PPE, intangibles. And is it their financial instruments? OK, uh, or financial, sorry, I should say financial assets, financial assets that you're looking at there are effectively if it's an asset they are your investments okay so you might make long-term investments in equity so in another company's shares you might go through there and make some form of investment in another company's debt so if it's there for the, for the long term uh, then that will go through there into your non-current assets okay uh, just note You've got your property, plant and equipment. So remember that is shown there, isn't it? At your carrying value. So you don't show the cost and the accumulated depreciation on the face of the financial statement. You just show it at the carrying value. Similarly as well, your intangible uh, is also at the carrying value, isn't it? So here with your intangible, it will be your cost less is it any accumulated amortization potentially any impairments uh, we've then got bits and pieces in terms of your, your current assets uh, so inventory receivables uh, you've also got your financial assets as well so again They are your investments, but when we're looking there at investments, we're looking at it much more in the short term. So maybe you've gone through there and invested in some shares. So you've bought the equity of another entity and you've just done that to go through there and make some short term gains. OK, so that will go there within your current assets. Uh, there isn't anything that you've got then that is different to what you've seen. You've got your cash and cash equivalents. OK, trade and other receivables. So I think there when you're thinking about is it your other receivables, things that will go in there. Would be your prepayments. OK, uh, and also as well. Any accrued income. So whereby you've gone through there and recognised some income, but you've not yet received the cash. OK, uh, again, we'll see a lot more of that when we get to looking at the revenue standard and IFRS 15. Uh, again, you all of a sudden are starting to see these bits that are new, uh, non-current assets held for sale. So that's a new accounting standard that you'll go through and see throughout the course. Uh, IFRS 5, you want to give it its number. Effectively, all that is doing there is saying, well, look, let's put it in a different colour, shall we? Let's put it in blue. Uh, 
is that you've got a non-current asset. You've gone through there and decided to sell that non-current asset. So, you know, likely to be PPE. Uh, but it's not yet being sold. And okay? you've made the decision. So if you made the decision to sell it, it's not going to be being used, is it? within the business for the long term. So let's move it down to its own separate category, non-current assets held for sale. OK, so again, just note that the can I write it in sideways? That's IFRS 5, OK, it's a tricky standard. OK, so do just be aware there. Uh, what have we then got as we go through the rest? I don't think there's anything that notably catches you out. Uh, so remember what you should have is that the total assets equal the total equity and liabilities. In the exam, it won't balance. Don't worry. You don't get marked for making it balance. OK, forget it. Move on. Like we said in the introduction, you're not worried about getting everything 100 percent correct. OK, the marks come from each individual line item. So from the PPE, intangibles, financial assets, inventory receivables cash and cash equivalents okay that's where you get the marks you don't get the marks for totaling it up and making it balance okay uh, again in terms of the liabilities so we've got our non-current so anything due in greater than a year and current so anything due in less than a year and again the, the, there's the usual aspects that you've got in there your, your long-term borrowing so that's effectively your your loans that you've taken out uh, you've got is it your trade and other payables. So your other payables that you're looking at there will be things such as your accruals and also here maybe your deferred income. So you've received the money in advance. Uh, that money can't be recognized as income until some future point in time so we don't recognize it as income we recognize it as deferred income okay and that's the a liability isn't it okay uh, again th there's new bits and pieces that you've got there uh, so we've seen tax but now we begin to look at the world of deferred tax so i'm not even going to try to explain that because it will just get you really confused so there's, there's a new bit to look at with regard to tax. We, we've seen tax payable. We're OK with that, aren't we? we? We've done that in financial accounting, but there's an additional tax balance that we now need to consider. Uh, has nothing to do with tax rules. It's just an accounting entry. It's crazy. OK, but, but there we go. Uh, and then what you've got in terms of your equity. I don't think there's anything new, different there, is there? You know, you've got your equity shares, which you may have referred to previously as ordinary share capital. To be technically correct, it should be your equity shares. You can see there that you've got, is it the par value? Which is there as a dollar. Uh, you've got the retained earnings and then your other components of equity. OK, uh, retained earnings is all your realized gains and losses. So what comes in effectively in terms of your profits? Uh, and then that's reduced by any dividends paid. And then you've got your other components of equity, which is where you have your unrealized gains and losses that feed through from your other comprehensive income. OK, there we go. Uh, so I think that's pretty much it in terms of the statement of financial position. If I've missed anything out, don't stress, don't panic. We'll come back and see it at some point within the syllabus. OK, because what you've then got is the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income remember this can be done as two separate statements so a separate statement of profit or loss and a separate statement of other comprehensive income but from an exam perspective we tend just to to combine them so that you've got your profit or loss and other comprehensive income then following immediately after your profit or loss okay uh, so what you've got there remember uh, it's not as at a point in time. It shows all the income, the expenses, gains, losses uh, for a period of time. OK, for the year ended, that year ended uh, for the 12 months. Same date as what you have on the SFP. OK, uh, when you go through there and have a look, you shouldn't see anything different 
apart from really the fact there that you've got is it your continuing ops and discontinued ops so again that effectively is this new accounting standard ifrs 5 as i said already it's complicated it, it's challenging uh for now just think there's two sides to ifrs 5 that there's the assets that you're going to sell so they are now no longer non-current but are transferred down to current and then from a statement of profit or loss side to the other side of the standard we need to split out the results in terms of what are continuing so we'll repeat in the future and then what are discontinued so what will not happen in the future to, to help the users of the account but that's it stop don't don't get any more detail than that just yet okay if you're desperate to find out more fast forward to the standard pardon me okay there we go other than that look, look 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 what you've got is there anything different no revenue cost of sales gross profit distribution admin operating profit finance cost there's nothing that's too different there is there the key bit is that what you're going to have to do now is normally you will require a working to work out the cost of sales distribution and admin expense okay uh, finance costs effectively is your, your interest paid uh, investment income that's things such as interest received dividend received uh, then you've got your tax so again we need to go through there and recap how to work out the tax expense dealing with any under or over provisions from the previous year but i just don't think that there is anything there that will go through and particularly catch you out okay uh, if you want your operating profit if you want to be specific that can sometimes be referred to as well as it can't it as pb it your profit before interest and tax that's effectively your operating profit isn't it to be international pb it's profit before interest and tax okay uh, let's ignore the discontinued operations let's not not get ourselves too confused at this early point in time uh, so at the top of the statement, you've got your profit or loss. And then at the bottom, you've got your other comprehensive income. Okay. Uh, so what you've got here, again, I don't want to go too far at this moment in time. Uh, because you've got there, isn't it, uh, you gain a non-current asset revaluation. So we've seen that. Uh, but then there's also gains and losses on fair value, other comprehensive income investments what that's, that's just yeah that's just far too much uh what i will draw your attention to however very briefly is that these gains these losses will not be reclassified to profit or loss so you won't see on the disposal of the asset that's being revalued of the disposal of the investment you won't see that then be transferred back up here okay that will not happen okay uh, there will be some items whereby the gains and losses can be reclassified but for what you see in financial reporting it's not going to happen okay based on the syllabus content that's all going to get left to, to the future and sbr your strategic business reporting formerly known is it there as p2 okay so we tend not to see that horrible little bit about other comprehensive income and items that can be reclassified and will not be reclassified at this level they will not be reclassified and we'll see what happens with them later when it comes to the disposal of the ppe or the disposal of the investments okay excellent uh what you've then got i suppose is that you go through and total down your profits to get your profit from continuing ops you add on what you get from your discontinued to give you your profit or loss for the period. Uh, you then go through there and take your other comprehensive income. And then that will then give you, is it your total comprehensive income for the period? Okay. And then what we can begin to do is we'll then start to see that feed in. Is it there to your statement of changes in equity as we work through the questions? But for the time being, we've worked... The statement of financial position we've worked the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income 
you're likely to see these examined in every exam without fail because in section C you're going to have to prepare either the individual account or the group accounts. Yeah, you're going to have to draw up a balance sheet, uh, income statement or like statement of financial position, statement of profit or loss for either the individual or the group company. So the examiner test IS1 on every single exam. So you need to be happy with that format. So give yourself a little bit of time, just have a look through the notes, uh, maybe go into the study text of your tuition provider, just have a look at what they've got and you'll see that it's virtually identical to what we've done there. And then once you've done that, what I'd recommend is that there's a question coming up, isn't there? Okay, uh, what have we got? Uh, there's an example, example number one, all about the statement of profit or loss uh, and statement of financial position. Have a go yourself. Don't let me do it. Get yourself into a good practice. Now, it's just recapping things that you've done from financial accounting. OK, this is a good point to test what you know or what you don't know from financial accounting. It could be brilliant. It could go through. And go, boom, 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 boom. This is dead easy. You could look at it and go, oh, disaster. I don't know anything, but you'll be able to identify what you do know and what you don't know. OK, so before you have a look at the next video, work this question yourself. OK, have a go. Don't look at the answer. No, get used to what it's going to be like in the real exam. Don't look at the answer at all. I'll be able to see you. OK, yeah, I will. Uh, so work the question. Then have a look at the video. Promise. If not, you're in trouble. See you shortly.